So welcome to your Monday practice. Go ahead and lie down on your backs and maybe give yourself a stretch while you're on your back. Reach your arms overhead, reach your legs below, take a deep inhale through your nose and just let it go through your mouth. And do that a couple more times. Purging out any old stale air you got going on. Letting go of any stress from your Monday. Just sigh it into the earth. Give it back. Let it recycle itself and come back as something positive. And then you can bring your arms down by your side and we'll just relax here for a moment in Savasana. So even though you're in this resting, rela relaxing position, let's not fall asleep. We have a challenging practice ahead, but just to give your body a moment to be, to relax. Savasana is the easiest position, I would say, to hold for a while because you can just let yourself go. It's not an active posture. Every other posture is active in some way or another. But in Savasana, you can just be. So if you have an intention that you want to set for today's practice, you could do that now. energy internal. Begin inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your nose. So we will be doing some Pilates today and I will cue you to exhale through your lips when we do um, some of the Pilates moves. If that's difficult to switch back and forth between nose breathing and mouth breathing, breathing, don't worry about it. You get a deeper muscle contraction when you exhale through your mouth in Pilates, but it's not, it's not crucial. So as long as you're breathing, you're good. So we will start here with a few Pilates things before we move up. All right, so from right where you are, I'm gonna come down and join you. Hug both knees into your chest and give yourself a little hug and a little rock from side to side, massaging your back. Tuck your head up a little bit, just Tuck yourself into a little teeny ball, making yourself as small as you possibly can. Take a breath and let it go. So we're gonna start with the leg stretch series to kind of warm you up and work your core. So bringing your right knee into your body, hold on right hand, right ankle, bring your left hand below your right knee and extend your left leg either straight up in the air or as always, the lower that goes down to the horizon, the harder it is. We just don't ever wanna arch our back. So pull your belly button in, back flat into the mat. Lift your head, lift your shoulders. Inhale as you pull that right leg in. Exhale, and here's where you can uh, exhale through the mouth as you switch. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, right leg in. Exhale, left leg in. Inhale. Nice and controlled. This is where I often say it's like you're balancing a glass of champagne or a hot cup of coffee on your belly button. So don't let your abdomen and your middle move around as you pull your legs in and out. They're the only things moving. One more time, finishing on your left and then keeping your head lifted, draw your right knee in. So now you've got both knees in. Take an inhale, exhale, let it go. Inhale, extend arms and legs as low as you want them to go without arching your back. Exhale, wrap it in, little ball. Inhale, extend, chin to chest, eyes to thighs. Exhale, release. Inhale, extend, belly button in. Exhale, little ball. Back flat on the mat as you inhale and exhale. Two more times. Inhale. I lie. Go ahead and extend one more time and hold it for a moment. I prefer arms straight up overhead rather than reaching back behind because that tends to pop your ribs out. Lower the legs as low as you want and hold it for three, for two, for one. Bring the right leg up, catch it in your hand. And switch, left leg in. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, left leg. So with our single leg stretch, we're trying to keep our legs nice and straight. That's gonna give us a nice stretch of our hamstrings and you're still keeping your center controlled. So as much as you're moving your legs, your abs are staying absolutely tight. You're balancing that champagne glass, not spilling a drop. And three, and two, last one. 
bringing both legs up, hands come behind the head. If this is too much, you can lower your head onto the, onto the mat. Otherwise, elbows are wide, both legs are lifted. We're gonna inhale as we lower down. Exhale, pull them back up to the top. Inhale, they definitely won't go to the mat. Exhale, don't arch your back. As soon as you feel your back start to arch, you've gone too far, pull the legs back up. Inhale, and bottom stays on the mat. Hips don't lift off. Stop at vertical. Inhale, exhale. Two more, inhale. Last one. Good, keeping your head lifted, keeping the elbows wide, bend the knees to tabletop for crisscross. Keeping nice and high and lifted. Inhale, exhale, twist. Opposite shoulder to opposite knee. Pause back at center. Exhale, twist. Inhale back to center. You're trying to touch the back elbow to the floor. Don't think about touching the front elbow to the knee. See if you can actually bring the knee past the elbow. And I know your abs are burning because I didn't give you a break. If you didn't take a break, they're definitely burning. Just a few more. <sighs> Try to exhale as you twist. And inhale back to center. <sighs> inhale. <sighs> Last one, finish on the opposite side from where you started and then release yourself down. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a rock. And if for some reason anything happens and you guys don't see me or something crazy, just like somebody unmute yourself and give me a shout. All right, place your feet on the floor, pretty close to your body. Hips distance apart, palms on the mat down. Roll those shoulders down and back, pressing into the mat. On the inhale, begin to tilt your pelvis and your hips and lift up to a, to a um, bridge. And as you exhale, pull the belly button in one vertebra at a time down onto the mat. You can add the arms if you want. As you inhale, arms lift up overhead. As you exhale, they press back down. So everything is controlled with resistance both directions. It's like you're pushing up a million pounds with your hips and then you're pushing down a million pounds with your hips and with your arms. Inhale. Really intentional. Last one, inhale, lift up. Stretch those arms high, press the hips high, take a deep breath, expand the belly. Come up onto your balls of your feet. If your arms are uncomfortable overhead, they can come down by your side, it doesn't matter. Lift up onto the balls of your feet, nice and high. And then imagine you're squeezing something together between your knees, like a red rubber ball. Squeeze and release, and squeeze and release. Activating those inner thighs. Inhale and exhale as you do. Last time, come back to center, lower the heels on the mat, and then lower yourself all the way down. Separate your feet about mat distance apart so they're wide and just swish your legs back and forth. Windshield wipering to release. Good, rock yourself up to a sit. Spin on around, we're gonna come right to a first plank. So coming onto a forearm plank, forearms on the mat. You can always do this from knees if you do not want to be on toes. What we don't want is to be popping our hips too high in the air because that doesn't really do much for us. And we definitely don't want to drop our hips because that's going to hurt our back. So find yourself in a nice neutral position. Take a couple of breaths here. We will be coming back to this. This is going to be a kind of planky practice tonight. Fair warning. And we're going to add a twist to this. So go to twist to one side, drop your hips towards the mat and then back up and then to the other side. Twist back to center. Twist. So your upper body isn't moving very much. I mean, there's a little bit of movement, but you're mostly working from the hips down. Your feet are kind of rolling from side to side as you twist, exhale, twist. Good, finish once again on the opposite side from where you started. Back to your plank, drop to your knees and sit yourself back on your heels in child's pose. Let your head relax down. Hi, Joelle, by the way, and Paige. Thanks for joining. Reach those hands out in front of you. We're gonna come up to our first downward facing dog. Curl the toes under, push the hips up. Jogging through, bending one knee, bending the other knee. Flexing your heel to the floor. Stretching your hamstring, stretching your Achilles. 
And then when you're ready, pause with the jogging and just press both heels towards the mat. Roll the shoulders away from the ears so you're not putting too much pressure in the joint of the shoulder. Don't worry about trying to press your chest to your legs. Instead, think about getting your sit bones up to the sky. If you hyperextend, try to put a little micro bend in those elbows. And now you're gonna ripple your spine forward and come into a plank. We'll do this with the breath. So exhale, press to down dog. Inhale, come out to plank. Exhale. And you can just come to regular yoga breathing here through your nose, but there's nothing wrong with doing exhale through your mouth if you prefer. Up to plank. Inhale. Sorry, I said up to down dog. You know what I meant. <laughs> Moving at your own pace anyway. Plank to down dog. Next time you come to plank, hold it. We're gonna do my favorite. We're gonna do push-ups. So your option, you can do this from toes, you can do it from knees. I'm gonna bring my hands a bit wide and do wide push-ups. If you wanna keep them narrow and do more tricep push-ups, that's totally fine. So we'll do five from knees or from toes. We inhale, exhale to press up, five. Inhale, exhale four, exhale three, and two, last one, press up to plank, if you widened your hand, just bring them back to the center, and push up and back, downward facing dog. Walk the feet towards the hands, letting yourself hang over, let the weight of your head bring you down. Maybe bend the knees so you round your back and then straighten your legs, stretch your hamstrings. A couple more times. Always working on that hamstring stretching. It's a really tight area for a lot of people and it results in back pain. So we like to make sure we're nice and loose. Ooh, hear that lovely breeze. <laughs> Come breeze, it's really hot. <laughs> bend the knees, drop the hips and roll yourself all the way up. I'm already sweating. I used to say, Joel, who's on live right now, when I taught in Guyana, I said people in the other countries pay big money for hot yoga. We get it for free. <laughs> All right, bringing the hands to heart center. Thumbs at the solar plexus. Feet about hips distance apart. They can definitely be closer, but you don't usually want to be wider, but you're nice and stable in their hips distance. Find your point to focus on in front of you, your dristy point. So anytime we're here, you're going to come back eye level point, making sure the chin is pulled in so we're not tilting it up or sticking it forward, shoulders down in their back pockets, belly button in so we're supporting our core and being aware of our pelvic positioning so we're not tilting forward nor backwards but finding that nice neutral spine. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose, slowing the heart rate. So we're going to work through a few sun salutations with some additions as we go. Next time you inhale, arms extend up. As you exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, slide halfway up, flat back. As you exhale, release. Stepping the right foot back, holding your runner's plank for a moment. So knee over ankle, pushing through that back right leg. Again, it's another moment to enjoy a stretch of the hamstrings. And then keeping the right hand of the mat twisting to the left, extending the left arm up overhead. And let's make a couple circles with that arm, just swooping that arm around, big circles, loosening up the shoulder joint. And then plant that hand on the mat next time it comes around. Step the left foot back to meet the right. Option to drop to knees as we lower down for Chaturanga. Go ahead and come all the way down to the mat for this first one. Releasing the legs. Bringing the hands right where they are, right? Just right under you for the moment. Contracting your gluteal muscles, just lift up. See if you can lift up without the use of your hands. So your hands are hovering above the mat. Elbows are pointing back. Contract your glutes, just opening your heart forward. Lifting your chin off the mat and lifting as much of your chest off the mat as you can without straining for a couple of breaths. Good, release that, press your hands into the mat, curl those toes under, push yourself up and back, down, we're facing dog. Heels pressing into the mat, palms pressing into the mat. 
like you're trying to stretch your mat longer. Your hands are pushing one direction, your feet are pushing the other direction, like you want to rip it in half. Extend your right leg straight up overhead so you're in a standing split, not opening your hips, keeping your hips in line with one another. And we're going to inhale and exhale as we bring our knee to our chin and come back. So as you exhale, hinge forward, knee comes towards chin, hovering for a moment, and then extend that leg back. And again, bringing it in as far forward as you can go, hover for a moment, and extend. Bringing it in nice and controlled, always working at your own breath. You can be moving faster or slower than me. And three. And two. Last one, come forward and hover for a moment, lifting up, push, 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 push up. Lifting that knee as high off the mat as you can, rounding the back, and then stepping that right foot down, bringing the left foot to meet it, and rising all the way up on the inhale, and exhale, hands to heart, inhale up, exhale, dive forward, inhale, flat back, halfway lift, exhale, release, stepping the left foot back, holding your runner's lunge here, knee over ankle, pushing through that back heel, Extending the hamstring. Keeping the left hand on the mat, opening to the right, right arm lifts, and big circles, opening up that shoulder joint. Nice and slow, just a couple of them, either direction. And then circling that hand down to the mat. Stepping the right foot back, coming to plank, option to drop to knees or lower all the way down. And coming up to a cobra, so inhaling, hands pressing into the mat, shoulders down, elbows back. Holding this cobra for just a moment, contracting the gluteal muscles. And then release that, pressing up and back, downward facing dog. Left leg extends up, standing splits. Again, try not to shift the hips, see if you can keep them square. Next time you exhale, hinging forward, pausing. And then inhale, kicking back back. Five more. Hinging forward. And kick back up. And if the breath seems weird doing it that way, do it the other way. You can inhale and exhale to kick back up. Sometimes I teach it that way. There's not necessarily a right and a wrong way. No, there's definitely not a right and wrong way. There's different things. Next time you come forward, number six, come forward and hover. Press up through those hands, lift that knee high off the mat, hold it, maybe a little shaking here, and then step the left foot forward, followed by the right foot forward, fold, inhale, lifting all the way up, and exhale, hands to heart. Another one, inhale up, exhale, fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold, hands to the mat, right foot steps back, and the right knee releases on the mat rising up to your low crescent lunge. Inhale, reach those arms up overhead, opening the chest, opening the shoulders, maybe lifting the gaze, continuing to drive forward, opening the right hip flexor, taking a breath. Good, hands find the mat, step the left foot back. Your option to do your cobra or up dog this time, chaturanga to up dog if you'd like. And then working your way back to down dog. I'm going to give you a moment here to pause and a stretch. So first, extend the right leg. Then bring that right leg out to the right elbow. So right knee to right elbow. I'm turning around so you can see what I'm doing. Right knee to right elbow. Now I want you to zip down your leg or down your arm with your leg to your wrist and then press the leg back up. So it's like you're zipping down your arm and zipping it back up. Lowering down and back up and three, and two. Last one, lift up, and now step your foot outside your hand. Yeah. So we're gonna do like a lizard, but we're gonna stay in our hands today. We're not gonna come to forearms. So knee over ankle, foot is wide, it's at the edge of our mat. Pressing through and maybe pressing that arm against the thigh, opening your inner thighs. And then we're going to do a variation of down dog, which we did a couple weeks ago. Pivot your back foot onto the mat, 
similar to a warrior two position. And then walk your hands out to your left. So you're in a deep bend in your knee. So this is like your hybrid kind of warrior two down dog. And I'm once again backwards too. You have the lovely view of me from behind. Sorry, apologies. Take a deep breath. Good, come back to center, bring that foot to the middle of the mat, square your hands around it, and step the left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, other side. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, left foot steps back, dropping that knee down. Rising up into your low crescent lunge. Inhale to extend the arms up. Opening the heart towards the ceiling. Bringing your gaze up. Taking a breath. And then releasing that down. Stepping the right foot back. Chaturanga to your cobra or your up dog. Hips down or hips up. Your option. And coming back to down dog. Taking a couple of breaths here. Same thing we just did. So the left leg lifts up, and then we hinge forward left elbow to left knee, and then we zip down our arm and press back up. Lower down and zip back up. Three and two. Last one, lift up and then step out. That was an Alicia move, by the way, Rihanna. That's where I learned that fun one. <laughs> we did one of her classes. I'm a big fan. So now we're in our variation of our lizard, staying up on our hands, pushing through our back foot, and then pressing against our inner thigh, opening up for a moment, breathing into it, and then pivoting that right foot, coming to this sideways downward facing dog. I'm sure it has an actual name. I just like to think of it as a hybrid between Virabhadrasa and a two, and down dog. And it's just a really nice back stretch, an inner thigh stretch, a lot of stretching going on. Deep breath. And then work those hands back, square off your left foot. So you gotta move it back a little bit to the middle of the mat. And then step your right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale. Yes. Good job. Inhale up. Exhale, release. Inhale, slide halfway up. Exhale, release. You can step or hop back this time. We're going to come to our plank. And then lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up to cobra, up dog. Exhale, press back, down dog. This time, right leg lifts up. Bend that right knee, opening up the hip, dropping that foot towards the opposite side. So you're stacking your right hip on top of left, opening through the pelvis. Deep inhale and exhale. Good. Bring it back to center. We're going to do the same thing we just did, but across the body. So knee comes to elbow across the body, right knee to left elbow, and then we zip down and up, just like we just did for six, five, four, three, two, Last one, and now you can thank me. We're coming to pigeon. Bring that right leg across. Extend your left leg back. Take a moment here, making sure the right glute doesn't just roll onto the mat. Stay lifted, hips stay forward. I'll let you rest for a moment here. So if you'd like, you can come forward and place your head on the mat or on a block. You're welcome to stay up if you prefer. If you'd like to come up and bend that back knee to royal pigeon, you may. You can simply bend the knee and that gives yourself a hamstring stretch. You could reach back, maybe grab it with one hand, give yourself a deeper stretch. And if any of you are working any deeper, trying to hook that in your arm, maybe you can grab your toe. I cannot. Take your breath. And then wherever you are, release that. Push yourself up, plant that right foot in front of you, and then release back into a half split. So the right leg extends, right foot is flexed. Hands find a place in the mat or blocks if you can't reach the mat. 
try to square your hips. Might forever shift in this posture. So you're sitting back, but you're trying to keep them square. Let your head release. And if you want, you can point and flex your foot. Find what works better. Maybe flexing your foot puts too much of a stretch. Maybe you're hyperextending, you need to point your toe. You decide, take a breath as you release into it. Good, and then press back up. We're gonna step back to plank and go through a vinyasa. Working your way to downward facing dog, you can always skip the vinyasa and just go straight to down dog. Heels pressing into the mat. Same thing other side, left leg extends up, bending that knee, dropping that hip open. So left foot is going to the right side. Lift up through the left knee. That's gonna help stack your left hip on top of right. Opening up through there. Bringing it back to center, same thing we did on the other side. So left knee comes across to the right elbow. We're in a twisted position. And then we zipper down our arm and press back up. And five, and four, three, two, and then on the last one, lift up and bring that left foot across. Extend the right leg back, finding pigeon. So again, try not to let the left glute roll onto the mat. So you're staying lifted, hips are square, shoulders rolling down and back. And then your option, if you want to come forward and place your head on the mat, I just have a stone patio in front of me, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's not very comfortable. And it just really depends on what you like. Usually you get a deeper stretch if you hinge forward, but sometimes I find that I get a better stretch here, so play with it. Neither one is better than the other. They just, you need to do what feels best in your body. What stretch do you want right now? And if pigeon ever doesn't work for anyone, you can always come on your back and do this in a figure four. So you lay on your back, you cross your ankle, cross your thigh, and you get the same stretch as we're getting in pigeon. You can stay right where you are if you want, bend that back knee. Just being right here gives yourself a nice quad stretch. We're going to come to this later, hopefully, and dancer. If you want to grab on with one hand, you can. Another option is to reach back with two hands. Sometimes this is more accessible than coming to here. But equally, you could have your foot and your elbow and your hand still supporting you. And then if you have the balance, go ahead and lift off that other hand. And smile, dripping in sweat. All right, wherever you are, Push up into plank, step that foot back, and guess what, I'm gonna give you a break. Drop down to knees and sit back on your heels in child's pose. Take a couple deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the nose. Let it go. Good. Press yourself up. We need to do our half split on this side. So bring that foot forward, the left foot forward, and then hinge back, flexing the left foot. You thought I forgot? I mean, I did forget, but I remembered very quickly. Again, play with it. Is it better to have the foot flexed or pointed? If you're better, lift it up. That's fine, too. There's no law that says you have to hinge forward. This is a half split, so it is working towards the split, so it is a, it's a deep stretch. Good, and then press that up, bring that left foot back, working through vinyasa or skipping it and going straight to downward facing dog. Holding for a moment in your down dog. And then hopping or stepping two feet forward, coming to the top of the mat. Rounding over and then inhale to come up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, Utkatasana, arms either extended or at heart center, your option. Sitting way back, so pushing the hips back, knees over ankles, and making sure we're not arching our back. So you really want your spine in one long line. So find that neutral gaze, so your neck is in line with, the, with your back. Belly button pulling in to support. 
standing up out of this on an exhale. Back into it, inhale, exhale. Breath of fire if you'd like, inhale, blowing out, exhale. Inhale, as you come to the top, even press your hips forward a little bit to get that extra contraction of your glutes. Exhale, inhale three, and two, last one, and then come down and hold, and then working through a sun salutation, forward fold. Inhale, sliding halfway up, flat back. Exhale, stepping left foot back or hopping two feet back, coming to plank. Working through vinyasa or going direct to your downward facing dog. Pausing in your down dog. All right, we'll work through some standing postures. So extending the right leg, swinging it forward, coming, planting it down and rising up into a high lunge. So knee over ankle, you can have a nice deep bend, as much as a 90 degree bend here. Pushing through that back leg, you don't have to be, but remember we just don't want to be tracking forward. So knee over ankle, arms extending. If that's too much, you just bring your hands to heart center. Shoulders rolling down and back, think of squeezing the shoulder blades together. And let's open this to a twist. So left arm shoots forward, right arm shoots back. Holding and breathing for a moment. Exalted warrior, back arm drops down, front arm comes up. And coming back. Back to center, arms extend. Transitioning to warrior two. So back foot is at an angle, front knee is bent. Again, that can be at a nice deep bend, but we're not tracking out over our toes. Pull the shoulder blades together. Activate your back. Shoot your fingers forward and you're gazing at your gisty point now over that front hand. Pausing for a moment. I would turn around, but then I'll have my back to you next time. So you're just gonna have my back this time around. Good side angle bend. We'll hold this for a moment. So if you wanna take this deeper and come down to the floor or to a block, you can. But remember, it's like you're between two panes of glass. Open that chest. Shoulders are stacked. I'd rather you be here with a spine in alignment than down on the mat all twisted. Press yourself back up, warrior two. And then we're gonna to come to trikonasana. So stepping your feet a little close together. Straighten the front leg. Arms extend, hinging forward, reaching, reaching as much as you possibly can before that right arm drops down. Left arm comes up, pulling the belly button in to support. Pulling these ribs in, what tends to happen is we get round and we reach the floor. So see if you can pull these ribs in, which usually means coming up. Activate the abs. So your spine is in a long line. And we're gonna take this to half moon, so bending the front knee. Front hand plants on the mat, on the floor, or on a block. And lifting up, opening the body. So you're still in that same open position. Leg is lifted, arm is lifted. If you want, you can lift the right hand up and balance. I'm on a really uneven surface. I'm not doing that tonight. And then come back up, warrior two. Still with me? Cartwheel over, hands to the mat, stepping the right foot back. And lower down, chest, chin, and hips. Meeting in your downward facing dog. Heels towards the mat, rolling the shoulders down and away. As we attempt to do the same thing on the other side, this time with my front to you. Left leg extends up, hinges forward, plants down, rising up, high lunge on this side. So again, it's your option how deep you go. It's easier to go deeper in this than in a typical warrior one. See if you can keep that back hamstring as long as possible. So you're really pressing, pressing through the heel. Nice deep bend in the front leg, shoulders down and away so you're not crunching up by your ears. Maybe you bring that gaze up and start a little bit of a back bend, your option. Bringing this to the twist, right arm shoots forward, left arm shoots back. Think about pushing that left arm like it's pushing against something that will help you get into a really nice twist here. Take a deep breath. Notice where the breath is going as you're twisted. 
Exalted warrior, left arm drops down, front arm reaches up, opening through those right ribs. Coming back to the twist, and then coming back to center, and our high lunge. Transitioning, Virabhadrasana 2. So your front heel will hit about the arch of your back foot in your warrior two. Shoulders pulling together, again, nice deep bend of that front knee, and your gaze is out over the front fingertips. So really that gaze, that dristy spot hasn't moved. From your high lunge to your warrior two, it's the same. Take a peek, make sure you can see your toes. Side angle bend, the left arm can come to the thigh. The front arm can, or the other arm can reach straight up or overhead, it's your option. And again, if you wanna keep it deep, make it deeper, you can just keep your torso open. Not twisting our spine in this. Taking a couple of breaths. And pressing back up, warrior two. Straightening the front leg, bringing the feet a little bit closer together to prepare for trikonasana. Hinging forward, reaching, reaching, reaching that left arm forward, left arm drops down, right arm comes up, pull the belly button in, and pull the right ribs in. Those of you who had me in class know I come around and I poke your ribs. Makes you bring them in. Long spine if you want, gazing up towards that hand, keeping chin to chest, or towards chest. And then coming to half moon, so bending the front knee, placing that left hand down, finding a spot to put it on, and then option to lift that back leg, keeping the chest open. Again, like you're between two panes of glass. Check that you're not overreaching with that top arm. It's not hinging back behind you. Straight up in the air. And coming back, you're addressing a two. Steady yourself there. And then cartwheel down to the mat, stepping the left foot back, working your way to your downward facing dog. I think I see Jill and Nate from afar. <laughs> Yay, hi. Heels towards the mat. Actually, go ahead and take a break. Drop your knees down, come to child's pose. Sit back in your heels, reach those arms forward. Okay, good, come back up. And before we come all the way up, we're gonna do our second plank. So back on your forearms, curl those toes under, coming to our forearm plank. And we'll do some abdominal work from here. So coming to a side plank, it doesn't matter which, we'll do both of them this time. So you're on your side, or do my favorite. Y'all know it's coming. Crunching knee to elbow. Six, five, four, three, two. Are you getting seasick watching the computer? It is like moving all around. <laughs> and one, two plank. Good, switching right over to the other side. So whatever side you didn't do, roll on over to the other side. Reach the arm overhead, knee to elbow for six, five, four, three, two. Last one, back to plank and dropping the knees to the mat and pressing back up. Drop down and up. Really pulling the belly button in, really using your breath here. As you exhale, if you exhale through your lips, you'll feel a deep contraction of your abdominal muscles. I'm shaking, so if you're shaking, that's fine. You're building muscle, means you're doing it right. Sometimes we try to, we make it easier on ourselves, and we don't shake. All right, drop down to knees, scoot yourself back, plant those hands down, curl the toes under, push yourself up, downward facing dog. And then stepping left foot forward or hopping two feet forward to the top of the mat. Let yourself hang for a moment here. And go ahead and bend your knees enough so you can put your hands under your feet. Padmasthasana, so your fingers in the middle of your feet your toes are at your wrists, you let your head hang down. So your knees will be bent. And then go ahead and work towards straightening your knees. Now, if they don't straighten, that's totally fine. 
just keep pressing against your feet or pressing against your hands and try to straighten them as much as you can. If you have straightened your legs, then pull your hands against your feet to try to bring your head down lower to deepen the stretch. Either way, we're working on hamstrings more than the back. We're stretching our back too, but the focus is the hamstrings. And then release that stretch, bend the knees, and come up into chair. Arms extend, sitting low. Chest lifting. Just as we started, we'll do this with action. So inhaling, as you exhale, breath of fire, stand up. Inhale, back to chair. Exhale. And three. And two. <laughs> Last one, Rapunzel up in her tower, come down to chair, good, and stand all the way up, take a big inhale, open the chest towards the sky, and exhale, hands to heart, okay, we're going to do our balance from here, I think we might have done dancer last week, but we're doing it again this week, because we've been working towards it, so bring yourself rooted onto the mat, you pick which foot you want to balance on first. I will balance on my left, so if you want to do right and do mirror image, you can. Bending the opposite leg, catching it in your hand. So remember, you can just stay right here. It's a great quad stretch, great for your balance. Extend that opposite arm up, so the same arm that you're standing on, leg you're standing on, extend that up. Now to deepen this, don't think about hinging forward. Instead, think about kicking that leg back behind you. So you're lifting the knee up, you're kicking your foot into your hand, a bit of a back bend might happen, and then you will inevitably hinge a little bit forward. But imagine you're trying to catch the toe behind you in this hand in front of you. So keep reaching the toe towards the hand, find a focal point, and breathe into it. Good, bring yourself back to our starting position and then shift that knee in front of you, hugging knee to chest. Take your peace fingers and hook them around your big toe and extend that leg as much as you're able. Maybe it's just to here. We've been working on our hamstrings today. So if you're able to straighten it, see if you can stand up tall. Hold it for three, for two, for one, let go of your hand, keep the leg lifted as much as you can, and then lower it slowly down to the mat. Good, shake it out. So find your stability, shift to the new standing leg, bend the opposite leg behind you, catching it in your hand. Oh, shoot, what just happened? Are you there? You're there. You went away for a second. Okay, unmute. Okay, sorry about that, don't know what happened, but you're back. Okay, so shifting the weight to that foot, bending the back knee, extending the opposite arm, kicking that leg up and back behind you, lifting, 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 lifting up, reaching that left toe for the right hand or opposite, whichever one you're on. Keep kicking into that hand, it's really active. Keep lifting that knee, holding for three, two, and one. Coming to standing, hugging the knee into the chest. Find your balance. Take a moment. Don't r rush if you're wobbling. Hook your peace fingers around that big toe, and then extend the leg. Trying to stand tall. It's really easy to round the spine here. See if you can stay lifted. Even if that means bending the knee, that's fine. For three, for two, for one, keep it lifted, letting go of the hand, and then lower all the way down. Good, inhale up. Bring the hands behind the back for a little bit of a back bend, just opening the chest, pull the elbows towards one another, release the head if you want, and come back to standing, rolling all the way down. Finding hands on the mat, coming back to plank, lowering all the way down to the mat. 
Coming to a locust variation, so hands clasping behind the back, lifting the chest, pulling the shoulders back. One last back bend, one last chest opener. And release that, pressing into your hands, pushing up and back, coming to child's pose. Either reaching arms forward, if it feels better to have arms by your side, but bring your knees together so that you can round your body over your knees. Again, bring yourself up, spinning those legs around. We'll do a bit of a runner stretch here. So bend one knee behind you. If for some reason this does not work for you, you cannot bend this leg back, you can do like the hurdler stretch that we sometimes do with your foot against your thigh. So bringing the knee parallel to the other knee so there's a little bit of a gap between your legs, but not a giant gap. Your thighs are still parallel. Opposite foot is flexed. Inhale, extend the arms up. Exhale, release that forward. Letting your head melt down towards your legs. Take a couple of breaths. If you want to grab hold of that extended foot with a hand, you may, or maybe your ankle. Let your heart rate slow as you take a couple of deep breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. And bring yourself up. Switch legs, tuck the other leg behind you. Again, fairly close to your body. You can move it out to adjust it if it's causing you discomfort. Otherwise, bring it closer in. Flex in the opposite foot, inhale. And again, if this doesn't work for you, bend that knee and bring the foot against the inner thigh. And then everybody release down, letting your head round over. Flexing the foot will give you a deeper stretch. You can grab hold of it if you can reach it. Notice where you're feeling this and breathe into that area. Good, coming back up. Option to bring the first foot back again so both feet are tucked behind you. And then come back, you can either come onto hands, if this is what works for you. You can come down to forearms, or you come all the way down to the mat and lay down. Depends on your knees, depends on your hips. There's all sorts of things at stake here. But giving yourself a stretch, it opens up the front of the body. You can come back. Sometimes it's nice to be supported by something if you're there. So just see what works. But again, you could be way up here. And if it doesn't work at all, then just hang out with legs out in front of you. Then that's enough for a moment. And then press yourself up from wherever you are. Everyone extend legs out in front of you. Deep inhale, grow tall, 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 like someone's lifting you up and you're rooted in the floor and you're still growing tall from the crown of your head so you get a centimeter taller and then hinge that forward releasing down breathing into the stretch And bringing yourself up, bending those knees. One last ab thing for us before we relax. So we're gonna come to tabletop, knees over hips, feet out in front of us. And we're gonna take this with movement coming from here to a low boat, Ardha Navasana. So as we inhale, we extend into our Ardha Navasana. As we exhale, we pull back up. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, and staying as stable as you can through your hips, your low back presses into the mat, and then lifts off. You can place feet on the mat 
if that's easier for you to modify. Next time you come out to your low boat, hold it. We did this at the beginning, remember? This is our double leg stretch. Inhale for three, for two, for one, and release all the way down. Arms stretch out overhead, legs down below, just like we did at the beginning. Draw your right knee into your body. Give yourself a stretch. Roll the right ankle. Bring the, grab hold of the right shin and just open it out to the side, stretching your inner thigh. Gently giving it a little bit of a pull, just enough to stretch, not hurting it. And try to hold the shin or the calf rather than the knee. So you're not putting pressure on your knee. And then bring that leg all the way across your body for a twist. Now, if you twist and your right knee doesn't go to the floor, if it's hovering up in the air, then go ahead and bring your left knee under it to twist. Otherwise, if that knee will come all the way across your body, go ahead and relax it all the way down. Turn and look over your right shoulder. You can cactus your arms. You can extend your arms long. You can put one hand on that right thigh. See if you can get the right shoulder into the mat. Take a couple of breaths. Come back to center, even yourself on your mat. Draw your left knee into your body. Give it a hug, roll the left ankle a couple of times. Grab hold of that left shin, open that leg out, stretching your inner thigh. Take a couple breaths. And then bring the knee across the body, onto the floor. And again, if it doesn't make it there, then bend the left knee so your knees are stacked. Turn and look over the opposite shoulder. Breathe into the twist. You should feel this in your low back. It's releasing any of those back bends that we did. If you sit all day long, which lots of us do, twists are really good to open up the low back. keeps our spine mobile as we get older so that we are always able to move. We don't pull our low back one day. And then come back to center, hugging those knees into the chest one last time. If you want to do any last posture before we come to Savasana, you may. Otherwise, just extend those legs, bring the arms down by the side, palms up, close your eyes and relax into savasana. Let your attention come back to your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Notice if there's any area of your body that needs attention, that might be holding on to some stress. Breathe into that body and try to let it go. Imagine it just releasing down into the earth underneath you. Feel yourself just sort of melt. Nothing is working right now in terms of your muscles. You're completely supported by the earth. No contraction needed, no breath, no focus in terms of keeping yourself where you are. Just let your breath be natural and observe it. Without trying to control it, just notice it as you draw it in. Noticing the coolness. As you exhale, notice the warmth. Notice your heartbeat. Notice the temperature of the ambient room on your skin. Notice your mind, just observing it, not judging it. If you're right now thinking that you're gonna make such and such for dinner, that's okay. Acknowledge those thoughts, but then see if you can exhale and just breathe them away for a couple more minutes.
I often talk about yoga as a as a journey and saying that wherever you are right now is where you're meant to be. And I think that that translates itself into our life as well. That so often we're racing to the next point or we're thinking about something that we did yesterday or maybe a mistake we made or something that we did well instead of just being where we are in the moment on the journey. And I think that this time right now in our in the US and around the world is a moment we're all we're all kind of in a different moment than we have found ourselves before. And all we can do is be in this moment. We can't change what has happened and we don't know what's coming. So we just have to be. And each of us can only be responsible for our own self. So I just wanted to read you a really short passage from a book called The Power of Now. Your outer journey may contain a million steps. Your inner journey only has one, the step you are taking right now. As you become more deeply aware of this one step, you realize that it already contains within itself all the other steps as well as the destination. This one step then becomes transformed into an expression of perfection, an act of great beauty and quality. It will have you take, it will have taken you into being and the light of being will shine through it. This is both the purpose and the fulfillment of your inner journey, the journey into yourself. Begin to bring your awareness back into your body, wiggling fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles, rolling your head from side to side, drawing your knees towards you and rolling onto your side into the fetal position. Take a moment there to pause. Take a moment to hug yourself and to be grateful for stepping foot on the mat. And to think about when you come out of this position, when you rise up from this fetal position, when you step off the mat, that that's that first step. All we can do is take one step at a time, live one moment at a time. And the more we take care of ourselves and our inner self and our inner being, the better we are for everyone around us. And just remembering that wherever you are in any given moment, you are on your journey and you are exactly where you need to be. When you're ready, press yourself up to a seated position, any comfortable sit. Sitting up nice and tall. Inhales, you reach those arms up overhead to give yourself a stretch. Press your palms together as you exhale, draw your hands to your heart, placing your thumbs against your solar plexus. Let's just take one deep inhale and exhale through your mouths together. Inhaling, open your mouth and sigh it out. Om Shanti Om. Light in me acknowledges and honors the light in you. Namaste.